Now, theoretically, I could bore you to death with the history behind ladder changes from year to year. There's always going to be surprises. The AFL is going to offer up some unpredictable results throughout nearly any game in any round, let alone the entire ladder come the end of the home and away season. However, I am more than confident in the following three teams in making rises up the ladder that are somewhat significant. So this isn't going to be like a, I think this team could go up one spot. This team, you know, might win one extra game. This is meaningful rises up the ladder. Now, you might argue that one of them is cheating and it's going to be the first one. So we'll talk about that straight off the bat. But let's get into it. Why don't we? New week, new Daz Talks footy video. Let's get into it. There's a big, big sound from the west of the town. So the Giants are the one that's cheating because you look at their ladder position versus how they finish the year, and they are, of course, going to be extremely different. Seventh on the ladder, one point off a grand final. Of course they're going to jump. But the reason why I wanted to include them in this video especially is because I'm struggling to figure out a way that they don't go up the ladder. Like... You might think the prelim might be a little bit out of range. You might think that they're not a grand final team, premiership team, etc. But I can't really find a reason that can convince me that the Giants will not be a significantly better team for the 23 games of the home and away season. I really can't. I can see an amazing season from Tom Green. He's my Smokey from the Brownlow. I think the Giants can and will put less pressure on uh, Sam Taylor and Jack Buckley and Connor Iden and Isaac Cumming and Lockie Whitfield and Lockie Ash and, you know, is Josh Faye going to get another go? Finn Callahan will rotate off halfback a little bit, according to a track watcher I spoke to a little bit, as well as wing and midfield work that we know Finn can provide. Sorry for being boring in this pick, but if there is one guy that kind of makes me go, the reality of their step, so how big of a step they take, is largely dependent on this guy more than any other, which might surprise you a little bit, is Jake Riccardi, who I think needs to be a genuine third forward. Now, I know it sounds crazy, but Toby Green is their best forward. That's not the crazy bit. But Jesse Hogan's definitely their second best. But Jake Riccardi did turn down genuine interest from at least three Victorian clubs. Hawthorne, as of course the team that I support, no, had massive interest in him. I think they offered him nearly a four-year deal before going after Marvio Chol. That's significant. He needs to back up to the Giants now and repay the faith they put in him and the ability that they had to provide him with the best home for his football career. And I think if he can take the next step, that forward line with, of course, Brent Daniels, Toby Bedford, they've drafted really well. He's going to play a significant role. So I just can't get past the Giants being a top four side. I can't get past the Giants not making the granny this year. Whether they win it or not is difficult to say, but... I think there's four teams that I can genuinely see being premiership threats. And on that sort of power ranking list, they might be number two. We're the pride of South Australia. Second team on the list to the surprise of no one's going to be the Crows. And I know I've spoken about the Crows probably more than any other side in the competition coming into this preseason. And I've got guys like Darcy Fogarty, who I still think need to step up in that forward line. We need to see that next step from guys like Luke Pedler, Harry Schoenberg. We need Rankin to become an A-grade small forward. They need Josh Rochelle to potentially take a step. They need to get more pace and bounce out of their third midfielder, especially if Dawson and Laird are going to be one and two. And they're not going to get that from Crouch and Sloan. But they still need to play in that role. They have drafted magnificently well. I know there are going to be some doubts over the defense. Offense wins you games, defense wins you premierships, which is why I think Adelaide can win a lot of games and be a top four team from outside the eight. But I'm not putting them in the contender status. I can see them being one year behind the Giants. So the Giants were not that great. Now, they did change their coach, whereas I don't think Adelaide will change Matty Nix for a while, and I expect him to get an extension. But I don't think that's going to happen until about halfway through the year, to be honest. So we'll see how that goes, but... The Giants outside the eight made a prelim. Adelaide, I think, finish outside the eight. Top four might win a final, maybe a semi-final if they lose the qualifying. But they're definitely going to be around the mark. And if you want my extensive thoughts on the Crows, you can see my why Adelaide will be top four. Most of those points still stand up now, if not all of them. So go check that out. 
And last but not least, the Gold Coast Suns. When I'm thinking about putting my top eight together, which which I'll do in about a month, six weeks, about that, you know, start of March, I can predict that uh, that could happen. Uh, Gold Coast are the side that I either put 7th, 8th, 9th, or 10th. And they haven't really moved from that mark. Damien Hardwick's going to make them better. I can't see a world where they finish 15th again. Or if they do, something has gone horrifically wrong. So I'm struggling with the concept that Gold Coast are going to be a struggling team in 2024. If everything goes right, they play finals. They, they, they just do. I think, like some other teams in the competition, they rely too much on their best eight players. Um, but there's also a premiership contender in Carlton that I would happily put into that bracket as well. But Carlton are a better side than Gold Coast, obviously, and by a long way. Um, but again, Carlton's success, like Gold Coast's success, is not going to be on their best eight players. It's going to be on the other 14 on game days. So that's where I stand on that. Their depth is going to be tested. The new game plan under Dimmer, if things don't get off to a good start in the first month, I feel like they're the team that everyone's going to do videos on being like, I'm selling my Gold Coast stock. I'll be snapping it up at the buy. I think they're going to come home with a wet sale. Can't wait to see what Ben King and Jed Walter can do. I once again fit Tuke Miller around, Matty Rowe, Noah Anderson in this midfield that is coming together, Braden Fiorini, Sam Flanders, where they belong in that group. Looking forward to seeing what their defense can do. Maybe Jack Lukosius will be an actual half-forward flanker, which for a guy his size sounds ridiculous, but I actually think it's his best position and where he should be playing, circa Jeremy Cameron for the Cats, which is apparently an unpopular opinion I've got, but alas, we move on. I just think they're going to be better. How better? Well, if I'm putting them either 7th, 8th, 9th, or 10th, they're at least five spots better, and that's pretty significant. So that's this video, guys. I know it's short. I know it's sharp, hopefully succinct, and you enjoyed it. On Thursday, I'm going to do my three teams that will definitely fall down the latter video, so hopefully you can stick around for that. I hope you have a great start to your week wearing my Dolphins hoodie, uh, even though they shit the bed in the playoffs. But uh, hopefully the um, AFC and NFC Conference Championship games went well because I'm recording this before they started. So fingers crossed we've got a good Super Bowl. Fingers crossed you have the absolute best start to your week that you can. There are going to be further announcements for the channel moving forward very quickly. Subscribe. Let's hit the 2,500 mark before Thursday's video. Can't wait to see you then. Goodbye.